Hi folks, this is Jason, hope you're okay. This is the fifth part of the issue of skepticism and thinking about skepticism. And again, I, I just want to come back to this issue concerning reason. For the skeptic, uh, reason is everything. Everything's got to be proven. And this is seen as sacrosanct. This is the sort of almost a god that they worship, that they think is absolutely central, is reason. Now, what I'm going to say is that nobody would disagree that reason is central and important. Um, but the fact that the atheists are, and the skeptics continually stress that this is the central thing, that we need reason, and reason alone, and that's all it is, shows you that skepticism, skepticism cannot be right. Now, the skeptic will turn around and say, well, look, look at all the advancements of all the the, the things that we have, the computer that you have, and uh, the, the spaceships that we can develop, and the technology, look what reason has achieved. And um, we need to sort of unpack this just a minute, because I think it's really important. Um, during the Enlightenment, which is right about the 17th century, uh, sorry, eight, eight, 17th to 18th century, the ph Enlightenment philosophers developed this rhetoric where they believed that reason could achieve everything, that reason could sort everything out. But the problem was is there was a departure at the Enlightenment between reason and morality, reason and emotion, reason and feeling. In other words, there was a kind of dichotomy, a split, um, between the rationalists who emphasised reason all the time and those people who were the romantics who emphasised feeling and emotion which was a reaction against rationalism so but this this movement has continued to go on and on and on this rationalist movement that says reason and skepticism is just the main thing and what i'm trying to elaborate to you is actually it split what it was to be human it, it kind of split humanity in half because let's just bear with me now just bear with me just for a minute because this is very important look at your own look at yourself as a human being and any other human being that you see around you in your family or wherever generally speaking you have a mind they have a mind okay you have a mind they have a mind so Skepticism is correct, that, that reason is important. We have a mind, you have a mind, I have a mind, etc. Okay, but it skepticism has not cottoned on to the whole totality of what it is to be human or the totality of reality because, yes, you have a mind, but you have emotions, you have feeling, you have artistic ability you you have intuitions okay that some of the deepest things in in life like a painting or a piece of music or an expression of love does not come from the rationalist project of providing objective evidence okay so the epistemology or the theory of knowledge of the rationalist and skeptics is only part correct it doesn't take into the full totality of what it is to be human or for the full totality of what knowledge is and for that reason it cannot be correct for all the advancements that have been made um, so there needs to be an epistemology that's based on the totality of what it is to be human now the Bible encourages rationality, it encourages reason, but it encourages feeling, it encourages passion, it encourages love, it encourages art, it encourages 
the other aspects of human nature as well so it has more of a rounded epistemology okay so that's just a little bit on the subject if you want me to unpack it a little bit more I will do at some other stage but that just gives you um, something to work on and think about because you'll hear a lot on YouTube reason 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 and I'm saying to you yes that's part of reality but hey it's not the totality of reality of what it is to be human and there's a problem here and we need to think about it and for that reason atheism and rationalism has got major flaws in its epistemology thank you